have a coat that's not cut. That doesn't work too good, does it? <clears throat> Hate to perform surgery right in front of you, but. I'm gonna try to abide by what seems to have been working. I don't even understand that. Why do you uh, why do you make a coat with a pocket and then sew it up? But yep, that's true. There you go. We have an answer. Now I know. I've been wanting to know that for a long time. Things you wanted to know but didn't know or were afraid to ask. I guess I'll get you to go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 16. Spend just a little time there. Um, it's not like this topic doesn't have a, a lot to talk about, but I just uh, feel like we we know the realities of, of death and, and things that uh, go along with that. Um, and uh, so there's a lot of different scriptures scattered all over the place. We didn't look at them. They're sort of just, you know, one verse here, one verse there kind of thing. Uh, Luke chapter 16 might bring some of it to bear uh, a little bit better real quickly for us. And I uh, thought we'd go over that this morning just for a few minutes and see how far we get. And uh, if we get through it, we'll go ahead and go into our activities. So let's open up to Luke chapter 16. <clears throat> Let's begin our class with a prayer this morning. Our Father in heaven, we're, we're thankful for you. you loving us. We're thankful for you caring for us, providing for us in every way, including the opportunity for us to obtain salvation through the sacrifice of your Son. And for us to be in a relationship that will continue, that we can remain in that relationship. You have given us provisions, although we are weak and frail and uh, make so many mistakes, that you have provided for us to be able to re remain in that relationship and walk in the light, that we can have fellowship, which is beyond our mental capacity to understand. But we're thankful that you care for us and that you want us to be your children. We pray, Father, that you'll bless us as we are gathered together on the Lord's Day, that you'll help us in our class this morning to understand those things that would benefit us and would improve us. We pray, Father, that you will be with us as we worship this morning that we will put aside those things of the world and that we'll reflect upon those things that uh, have come to pass to make us a body of believers and uh, the sacrifice that took place that we could enjoy the blessings through your Son. We pray, Father, that we'll worship today in a manner that pleases you and that we will worship worship based on what you desire not what we desire and that uh, we will do it with sincerity and the proper scriptural approach and attitude and that we will be pleasing in your sight we bring before you this morning many who are unable to be with us due to sicknesses or to from surgeries we pray that you'll Bless them and that they might get the proper treatment and be back with us. We pray for those who've lost loved ones and we pray that you will continue to bless them and comfort them and help us to, to be there for them, to help them through these difficult times. 
We're thankful for the spreading of the gospel. And we pray that, that many will be able to hear the gospel, the truth, that uh, this world may change, that we may come to a knowledge of your son and sacrifice and the peace, the comfort, and the joy comes from living a life according to your will. We pray, Father, that you'll bless our missionaries, bless the spreading of the gospel. Bless this nation, Father, and our leaders. Help them to make the right decisions. We pray that uh, you would direct them the way that you would want them to go. We pray that this nation will be brought back to some of the principles upon which it was founded, the belief in God and freedom of us to, to worship. We pray, Father, that you'll help us through this day and uh, continue with us in the days ahead. Always watch over and care for us. And one day, own us and crown us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> one of the things that we're going to see in this story, as we sort of... Uh, go through it, and I don't intend to read the whole thing, but we'll sort of go through it and just sort of highlight some things about it this morning, is the, the fact that death is going to come to us all. And we talked about it last week, the fact that the thing that we need to do as individuals is to be prepared for death. Um, that's sort of a some we don't want to think about, right? We, we don't want to think about uh, dying. We don't want to think about, uh, let's get, get our house in order, uh, as it were. Uh, we, we try to just put blinders on when it comes to that. There's, um, there's a tendency, and a lot of people do not even talk about it. Uh, but death is a great equalizer. We're all going to die unless... Uh, Christ comes again. And so we all have to face that. As we look at examples of the death of Lazarus, we understand the emotional side of it, the fact that there's been a loss. We understand the, the, uh, those who would mourn with us uh, over that. But we also recognize that there's, um, there's the idea that uh, Steve sort of pointed out last week from the, the parable of the, uh, or the story at least, about the man who was holding the wedding feast and he asked his guests to come, they all made excuses. And one of them was, I've married a wife, I need to go. And so we need to understand that, uh, and, and one who, that there's some, dead buried, the dead needing to be buried, uh, things of this nature that uh, come up in, in uh, the scriptures that we read about. So we understand there, there is compassion during that period of time. We understand that there's great loss. We understand that there's an empty, emptiness, but we, we must understand that there is a need to go on. And there are circumstances where when people uh, lose someone close or a mate that uh, they will um, be in a mode of depression. It's hard to get them out of it. And, um, and we've seen examples where, I mean, you know this uh, from stories, or real stories, but firsthand information where someone dies on such and such date and then two days later their, their mate dies. Um, and those things are, those are real. Those are things that are happening. Those are true stories. But we understand that life goes on. And uh, we need to understand that as life goes on, we have responsibilities. That it's not a situation where thing is, things are over. I don't, you know, I don't have anything else to do. You know, I'm just going to sit here and not do anything and then, one day die myself. That's, that's not the indication that we see um, 
as we look at scripture and, and how things need to go, go forward. That's interesting is Jesus would heal people who had, uh, heal's not a good word, bring people back to life that were dead. Um, what was going to happen again? They were going to die again, right? And, and so death is not something we're going to escape. And we don't want to look at it from a morbid perspective. We need to be able to think of it as Christians from a perspective that, you know, um, that we need to be busy doing the Lord's work. And um, I, I've learned a lesson. I don't know if it's sort of a humorous kind of thing, but uh, Seth has said some things to me uh, on numerous occasions. I said, well, I'm tired. Let's just let's rest. He said, you can rest when you're dead. And there's a point to that, you know. We need to be busy. We need to be working. Now, I, I'm, not talk, I'm not trying to encourage everybody to wear themselves out and just, you know, and uh, not be able to do anything. But there's a point to that. Uh, we sing the song, We'll Work Till Jesus Comes. And uh, the idea here is that we, we be active, we be doing what we can, and, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll sleep later. We'll rest later. And that's how we need to be about the Lord's business. I've learned firsthand, uh, or seen firsthand, how that um, after the death of a mate, someone can just give up. And that, that's, that's really bothersome to me and troublesome. Um, you, it's easy to talk about what you would do, right? When we look at the children of Israel in the Old Testament, and they were unfaithful to God, and God would... They would be taken off into some kind of captivity and then God would bring them back. They would repent. They'd say, God, well, you know, we're sorry. We'll, and then he would bring them back, especially as we look at the book of Judges. We look at that and we say, we wouldn't be like that. We would have, we would have more consistency. We would be more uh, in tune with what the Lord wanted and we would be following after God. And uh, so it, it's easy to say what you would do until you get there. But I would hope that, that uh, all of us in a situation like that would still be active in doing what we can do until the time we sleep. And um, so it's just a thought for us to, to think about. Um, you know, a, a prime example of that uh, to me is David uh, on the illness and death of his son that was born to him in Bathsheba. While he was ill, David mourned. He, you know, he wouldn't shave. He, you know, he wouldn't clean up. He wouldn't eat. And, uh, and so the child died. And, and then like immediately after that, David cleans himself up and the people were astonished and said, what's going on here? And David's explanation was, well, uh, he can't come back to me, but I can go to him. And that's the thing that needs to uh, encourage us. That uh, that's an example of where we need to get on with our lives, continue to do what we know is right uh, for all the time we have left because we don't know what that is. So we talk about death and cemeteries and, and uh, things of that nature. Um, as I said in the beginning, it's not something I really want to talk about. But there are things that are real that we need to understand. And so uh, we need to think on things and what we can do. Luke chapter 16 have a situation where there's a rich man and Lazarus the beggar who sits at the gate, sits at the table of the rich man, you know, wanting to, to get the crumbs that fall off the table. And it's interesting to me that... Uh, the perspective is, or the, the idea seems to be uh, conveyed to me at least, and you may look at it differently, but it's as if the rich man doesn't know Lazarus exists. He doesn't know he has any needs. I, I, don't, I find that very hard to believe. But it's like he doesn't know who this guy is. I mean, he's not, there's nothing in the story that says, you know, he's complaining about Lazarus being, you know, at, at the table where the crumbs are falling or... 
just outside his house or whatever. But the idea is, it, it never know, there's never an acknowledgement that he's there, that he exists. And maybe from a perspective of, that's not the same level that I'm at, or I'm, at, I'm so much above that, that I just don't associate with that, or I don't see that. I don't know what the rich man's mentality was, but it doesn't appear that he ever acknowledged that Lazarus existed. And I find that interesting. But he's a rich man, and Lazarus is a poor man. You would expect Lazarus to die because he's obviously malnourished, uh, and he is not in the best of health, and that's how we picture him. And we expect him to die, but the rich man dies also because death comes to us all. And uh, so we see this, the situation here, and, and apparently Lazarus was faithful in carrying out the, the Jewish law the best that he could, and we see him receiving rewards being in Abraham's bosom. And the rich man is afar off in torments. And, um, and so we see, we see that contrast. So we're going to be separated based on the, the way that we, we have lived. And there'll be uh, ultimately a day of judgment where we'll be, our works will be called into to question and, and will be um, discussed. And so from this particular passage, it, it should cause us to pay quite a bit of attention to the fact that death is inevitable and that there's going to be a reckoning of how we've lived our lives. And we need to live our lives in accordance with God's will. And uh, we need to be prepared for death. Um, and so that's what I see here in the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Now there's, a, there's some other things that we need to point out here in the lesson. Um, According to the lesson, there's a great gulf fixed between the two. Um, the rich man asks that Lazarus may just dip his water, or uh, his finger in the, his tip of his finger in the water and come and put it on his tongue because he's tormented in these flames. He's, he's, he's in a place based on how he lived his life. And the situation here is explained that there is a great gulf fixed in other words, you're not going to get in the day, uh, after, you know, after your death and say, well, or in the process of dying, um, and, and as, as you transition from living your, and breathing your life breath, last breath into to death and saying, oh, I've changed my mind. I really want to, you know, make things different. Now, Sister Arlene asked a question last week. And uh, I don't know that I answered it well, or I answered it to her, her satisfaction. But she said, what about deathbed confessions or, you know, and, and I assume with that, someone being baptized, but on their be deathbed. Um, and I'm not going to try to answer that. Uh, that's in the hand of God. If, uh, if they did whatever they needed to do, if they were truly repenting of what they'd done, if they believe in Jesus as the Son of God and they proclaim that, uh, I'll leave that up to God. Uh, God's going to have to make that decision. I will say this, that is a poor way to try to enter into eternity. When we talk about being prepared, that's not being prepared. Um, and so, um, I don't have an answer for that. I mean, I could speculate. I can say, well, based on this, I think this is the way it is and all that. But I'm going to leave that in the hand of the righteous judge. I, all right. It, 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 it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's in his hands. It's not in our hands. But uh, that's just really not the way uh, that we should try to 
to deal with God. Live my life in, in recklessness and uh, in rebellion. And then on my deathbed say, well, you know, <laughs> I sort of see where this is going. I'm going to see if I can punch that ticket, you know. And um, that's, uh, that, that's, that's a little, really, really risky. I wouldn't want to try that. Uh, but the idea that we've talked about here the last couple weeks is be prepared. Be prepared for that. The rich man wasn't prepared. He, he was the type of rich man that we read about in scriptures that he fared sumptuously every day. His mentality was, this is going to continue on. My life is going to continue on. And uh, we know uh, from personal examples and from what the scriptures teach us, we don't know about tomorrow. And um, we think things are going to be okay. But that's not the case. And uh, they may be, but they may change. And uh, in, most, in a lot of cases, death will check, sort of catch us by surprise. And so we need to be prepared. The rich man was not prepared. And so now there's a great gulf fixed between them, and there's no going back. He can't go back and say, well, you know, give me an, another chance. Let me go back and uh, treat this, this Lazarus guy a little bit better. You know, there's, there's no opportunity for that. And uh, so we need to, to, to recognize that, that, that death, when there's death, is final. Um, now, I know there are stories where people supposedly died and then somehow they came back to life and that kind of stuff, but I uh, don't know the validity of those and I uh, don't know that I believe them uh, because death is, is usually final. And so, you know, we're going to be separated and we're going to be um, uh, in a situation where God has put us where we, where we need to be. And, and so, in, in this story, as we go farther into it, we see that he's not going to be able to, to go provide a relief to the rich man. Lazarus is not, because there's a great gulf. And so, uh, that, that's understood, that there's a separation. There is understanding that... Um, uh, in these cases that we see here, and, and I believe the scriptures would, would get, wouldn't give us this insight if it's not, not true. Uh, even though God would maybe provide an example in scriptures that's a story that's not necessarily with real characters in it, I don't believe he's going to mislead us in, in how things would be. And so when I look at this passage, I see the idea that there's, there's an awareness. Uh, there's an awareness that... Uh, uh, Rich man's aware he's in, he's in torments, and Lazarus is in Abraham's bosom, uh, indicating the, the place of comfort. So, so the idea here is that um, there's an awareness that they know where they are. Uh, further uh, demonstrated later in this passage is the fact that um, the rich man says, "Well, let me go back to my brothers." And let me go and tell them, don't come to this place. And, and so, that's not going to happen as we go through the story. But here's the point. Every person, and I don't, I don't know how to say this other than what my understanding is of Scripture. And I don't know that, that I am... 100% knowledgeable about this, but from what I read in the scriptures and what I understand, um, nobody that dies outside of the Lord is going to be comforted and taken care of, as we see in the case of Lazarus. They'll be in a situation where it's not a good situation. And anybody that is in a state of torments, it's not where they need to be. They, want, they wake up not knowing. Um, they wake up understanding where they are and the idea that it's not good. Everyone that's in that place 
would want to come back to us and tell us, don't come here. That would be the message of everyone that's there. You do not want to come here. And so we need to get that from this particular story that's being told. This is not a place we want to be at. And for us to be in the right place, we have to be what God needs us to be. His children and faithfully serving. And so we need to get that from the passage. And so he says, well, if I can't go back, uh, uh, then, you know, um, they're not going to believe. They're not going to listen. And uh, the passage goes on to say that, that uh, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not listen to someone who's come back from the, from the dead. Now that's one of the saddest statements in Scripture to me. Um, maybe people just aren't really aware uh, of fin- spending the, their, their, uh, their eternity in a place of torments. Maybe that's just not an awareness. But the scriptures are clear on it. The scriptures are, are clear on the pain and eternal anguish for those who will not obey God. And God has separated him. God has... Uh, decided would be in a place of eternal punishment. I, uh, I believe most people, and uh, I hate to keep using personal analogies about this, but you know, when you go to work and you're in this little box all day long, most of your conversation with the people in the boxes, right? So, uh, the guy in the, in, the, in the box with me, and there's two or three in there. Uh, one's always gone somewhere else in another building. So really three of us. And uh, as far as insight, it's this one guy that I always, you know, have more of an insight to what, to what he thinks and how he believes. And I really believe that his mentality is, uh, you know, life is finite. He understands that. But he's going to do everything he wants to do in that finite period of time. And when he dies, he's just dead. That's the way he looks at it. Uh, he, he'll make statements like, well, I know where I'm going. You know, I'm already going to, to hell anyway. And that's the way he, you know, he'll say things like that. He'll say so. Uh, but I don't think he understands. He doesn't comprehend. Go over to a, a hot stove and just put your hand on it and just keep it there. Well, you're not going to do it. No, no human being is going to do that in the right mind. Now, if you're doped up or on some kind of medication or drugs or something, you might go over there and just unknowingly just basically burn your, your hand to a crisp. But most of us, if we were to go over to that hot stove and get close to it, we would not stay on it very long. And I just don't think people understand the concept of hell anymore because... That their thinking is it's not a real place. And so you, you think about it. Uh, it, it, it uh, it's comforting in a sense uh, for someone who is outside of, of living a life in, in, within the, the, the body of Christ. It's somewhat of a comfort. You know, you, you, you enjoy life. You, you know, you buy things you like. You buy toys whatever, you enjoy yourself and then you die. That's not too bad, right? Uh, it's over, it's over. You know, you just basically you just bl- blink out. It's like turn your computer off, you know? And, and it, that's how people think. That's not the reality of the scriptures. And so if anybody were to really start to comprehend the fact of the torments that had been, been prepared for those who refused to obey God, uh, I think there would be some changes in people's minds. But can you imagine somebody coming up to you and you know them? There's no doubt who they are. And they say, You're, you were dead. And they say, well, you know, you need to change your life because it's real. 
that uh, God's punishment is real. Can you imagine someone living their lives uh, in rebellion to God's will, doing whatever pleases the flesh? And someone coming up to them that they, they totally recognized and knew they were dead. And they said, hey, you need to change your ways. The scripture's telling us that they won't believe even if someone comes back from the dead. Now, I don't know, you know, is that 100%? Is there, are there certain people that if they came back from the dead and told you, don't come here, you would change their lives? I don't know, but the scriptures are indicating that they're not going to listen. Uh, maybe the idea that the, the flesh is in control, and they're not going to give it up. You know, there are a lot of sins that people are involved in. They just either will not or don't believe they can give up. And so we, we see some of this. On a daily basis, we see the ideas of pornography. We see... Um, we see the, uh, the ideas of, of uh, pedophiles. We see people who are addicted to alcohol. We see people who are addicted to some kind of drugs. They just don't seem to be able to get out of that. And so um, I don't know if that's the case. But uh, there's this television show, and I've never watched it. I've seen it passing just quick, and I think it's called uh, Scared Straight or something like that, where they go into these kids that are in jail, and they, they, they tell them the reality of it, and uh, they try to scare them to death so that they'll never be back in jail again. That's at least the concept as I understand it. Well, can we, can we be scared to a point that we give up sin? And uh, if we can't, then we're going to spend eternity uh, in punishment. And that's just clear in the scriptures. That's the way things are going to, are going to uh, pair out. So we have the rich man. He's going to spend eternity in torment, in eternal punishment. And um, there, there's not anything he can't come back. He, he's, not going to have, he's not going to be able to go back from the grave and, and tell somebody, even if it's just for a brief time. Um, and, and God has put in all the necessary provisions with what we have today to warn people of the devastating life that they're living and where it's going to lead. And so when we talk about death and cemeteries and tombstones and all that, we have to talk about the reality of death. We have to talk about the judgment, we have to talk about um, that there's no changes. We can't go into death or, th or through, <coughs> through death, what, whatever it is that we, we obviously haven't gone through, we don't understand it. We can't get to the point and say, well, you know, God, I, I took the wrong, wrong uh, door here. It's not the door I wanted. Can I go back and change it and go in that other door now? There's none of that. And so, prepare ourselves. Try your best to prepare others. Um, and if death comes to uh, a maid of yours, spend your time doing what you can after that death to live the life God wants you to live and stay busy. And uh, just remember that God will take care of us and how we need to be taken care of. Um, you can say that's easy to say. You haven't been there. Um, true. I haven't been, been there in a lot of circumstances that maybe you have. But I've been there too many times, I'll tell you that much. And I've seen too much. And so it's an important thing that we talk about, um, even though it's not a very good popular subject to talk about, that we understand death, we understand what's going to happen when we die, we understand the, the uh, 
finality of it in the sense that we cannot come back. And the only thing we can do is prepare so that when our death takes place, that we're God's children. Faithful, uh, faithful to the end, as the scriptures teach. That's the only way we're going to receive a crown of life. Okay, any thoughts or more discussion that you want to talk about? Yes, sir. This is not something that's just maybe or made up. This is from someone who, who knows. And um, this is truth. And we need to pay attention to it. Right. He understood what it was about. And, and, and uh, obviously he knows the, how devastating it can be. Um, there is a there's a problem that we have, and uh, something you said I, I want to just touch on. I have just paid attention over the last several months, maybe in the last year, to how many times in Scripture. <clears throat> are the words that in essence say you better be listening. We look at it and it says he that hath an ear to hear let him hear. And we see that passage or that kind of sentiment throughout the scriptures. <clears throat> I'm, I'm convinced that one of the biggest problems that we have today is we are not listening. God hasn't changed his message He's told us over and over again. We have somehow the contaminating noise of the world has dulled our ability to hear what the scriptures teach. And so we'll, we'll just sort of, a, <clears throat> sort, of this, sort of brush it off of, our, uh, off of our shoulders and say, well, that's, that was back then. Uh, or uh, that's just not something that I really think God's going to be that way. Well, if you can find in Scripture where God has changed the way he views things, then maybe there's a possibility. But there's a strong message to us today, even within the body of Christ. You're not listening. I, I see that through a lot of passages. Uh, and, and so even encouragement that maybe some of the writers would, would make, that you pay attention to this. This is important. And what they're saying in all that, you better listen. And we can't live our lives thinking we know what the Lord wants us to know, thinking that we're and convincing ourselves that we're doing something that's okay, and not pay attention to what the Scriptures teach. And so, if we listen, like Tommy says, then we know what the truth is about a place we don't want to go to. We've got to be listening. And we've got to help other people to listen. I, I'm just, you know, I'm blown away from the from this viewpoint that I've thought about this for a number of years that if we had in attendance the number of people that are if we were to, were to have kept a real roll book of people who should be here today if we really kept that up over the years we couldn't put them in here we would be outside the building but instead of listening to God 
they're listening to the world and what, the, what Satan teaches and they're listening to him and not listening to God. And the world's telling them it's okay, you've got time, it's okay, hell's not really real, it's okay, God's going to probably just recognize that at one time you, you obeyed the gospel and that was good enough. I don't know what lies that they're believing, but they're not here. And I firmly believe that if we want to serve God, the best of our ability, we're here. This is where we're supposed to be. This is who we're associated with. We should be here. And if we are regularly, week in, week out, month in and month out not here and we're we're saying we're part of the body of Christ there's something that we're not listening to and we're not listening to God's word we're listening to the world and the world's going to taint us and it's going to uh, cause us to believe things that aren't real and it's going to cause us to take things that are real and to say that they're not real so it's easy when you start talking about hell, the people say, I just don't really believe that exists. But um, the scriptures are clear. The scriptures are clear that there's going to be a day of reckoning. The scriptures are clear that death is final. And um, it's something that we've really got to pay attention to. We've got to be listening. And we've got to help other people to listen. And to stop that rat race that they're in of, you know, I'm too busy to, to go to church. I'm too busy to do this or that. Well, we've got to understand we're never too busy to serve God. And if we make it something that we do every day of our lives, we don't have to worry about it. It's what we live, it's what we breathe, it's who we are. And when it's that much a part of us, we don't have to think about what we're doing. We know we're living according to what God wants us to do. This is sobering. Uh, this is something that it, it causes us a reality check every time it comes into our lives. And it's difficult to deal with and yet God provides a promise of something better and that's what we all work and strive for and we we would certainly hope that we want everyone to go there God wants everyone to go there um, he's not willing that any would perish he's given opportunities but opportunities have to be seized upon if we're going to, to make a change in the, the lives of people in this world. All right, we've sort of taken up our time this morning. Next week we'll go through the activities. And uh, then we've got a couple more lessons. And I'm going to be, uh, if we hear nothing else, I'm going to be trying to select a, a study for us for the next few weeks. <laughs>